Okay, so hello all, welcome to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So today in this video, uh, I will be going to share one interview with you. Okay, so <clears throat> in this interview, most of the questions were asked related to the LWC. Okay, so all these questions are the questions which you must all know if you are if you have worked on the LWC or you are experienced in the LWC components. Okay, so you can uh, look through these questions and let me know if you have any queries related to any. So you can let me know in the comment section. We'll discuss. Okay, and one more thing I would like to know uh, that yesterday through the post I have shared one link where you can schedule your interviews and uh, everything so if you want to talk to me or anything so you can take your timing or take your slot from there i have shared here all my available slots there okay so those who have mailed me regarding the interview so you can directly schedule your interviews from there okay so it will be better instead of waiting for me to reply you over the mails okay so you can take your time directly from there so i have shared the link in the comment section also you can get it from there okay so now let's start with the video okay so let's start with basics so tell me some benefits or the uh, points over aura of lwc uh, can can you just repeat the question some points okay which makes web components much better than uh, aura components yeah, actually aura framework is older uh, framework and we can it uh, lwc is a better performance than the aura uh, than the aura and uh, yeah, for the security purpose, uh, also writing web component is much better than OZA. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some functionality which uh, AWC is not supported right now. So yeah, this is one drawback for the AWC that like a global function, we cannot use global function in AWC, but with the help of OZA, we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and Salpos is come uh, now in making more changes on our AWC part than the OZA. So I think the future is LWC now. Okay. So how do we use this LWC component in VF pages? Okay. So directly we cannot use LWC component in VF pages. But if we want to uh, use LWC pages in VF page, then with the help of lightning out, we can do that. Do and we again, we have to yeah. again we have to use that writing web component inside OLA application with the help of lightning out, and uh, we have to embed that writing OLA component uh, in the web page. Okay, can we use this web components inside OLA component? Uh, yeah. Okay. How? Uh, by just uh, calling the name of the writing web component inside OLA. Okay, and Aura inside LWC? Uh, no, right now we cannot uh, use Aura inside LWC. Okay, so what is the difference between connected callback and render callback? And okay. When to use which function? Yeah, basically connected callback is uh, invoke when the instance of the component, component instance is uh, inserted into DOM. Mm -hmm. And the render callback is whenever the component is changes, it again render. Connected callback only invoke uh, one time, mm -hmm. but for the render callback, it will invoke multiple times. Okay, so can we call our uh, Apex method inside this connected callback? Uh, yeah, I think we can call Apex method inside connected callback. If the yeah yeah and inside render callback. Uh, yes, we can do that. But as I mentioned, it is uh, multi it will invoke multiple times, so it is not a best practice. I think. Okay, so can we avoid calling of render callback uh, multiple time, or can I avoid that? In uh, the logic which is written inside this render callback should be executed once. Uh, yeah, we can do that yeah, the, with the help of boolean property has render, we can avoid to invoke only one time. Okay, so in case of parent child components, okay, so okay. which function is called first in uh, in this connected callback? Uh, parent component. And the render callback, in case of render callback? 
uh, render a callback flow from child component then present component from child to present okay can you tell me the different functions we have in this life cycle loop okay so first one is the connected callback uh, connected callback oh sorry constructor connected callback disconnected callback uh, render callback and error callback okay and what are the different methods to call a uh, apex com uh, method inside this web components uh, we can call it with the help of wire method yeah with the help of imperative and what is the difference between both uh, basically when we want to so, perform some point and click action perform then we we'll go with the imperative and uh, with the help of wire we can it is a reactive property reactive wire service so whenever the property changes again the server call is hit yeah again the apex method is called uh, so with the that we can according to our functionality we can uh, choose that okay so have you used getter setter method in your components getter setter i use get getter method only not the setter thing so why yeah. we use this get method it uh, return our desired uh, des desired input it will return that from the html component uh from js from js okay so how do we pass value or how do we connect uh, the components if we, i want to pass value from child to parent okay when we want to pass the value from child to parent uh, with the help of uh, event custom event mm -hmm. we can do that first we need to create an custom event and then we need to dispatch that event and in the parent component we have to call that child component inside parent component and uh, we have to mention that on just event name our custom event name okay uh, yeah. have you used popsub also uh yeah my second project i have used popsub but recently i use lms also okay so what is the difference between both you find yeah basically uh, popsub is communication between two component which are not in a same dom tree mm -hmm. and we cannot communicate from lws component to visual force component or any and in lms we can communicate between two component which are across the dom so like between the visual force pages or the component and lws component with the help of lms we can do that and popsub is based on uh, javascript uh, and lms is based on the self post uh, lighting messaging channel mm -hmm. okay okay so let's suppose in my component i have wire method there okay then the connected callback is there okay and render callback is also there so what will be the execution here when you find in your debug or in your console so what will going to execute first here okay uh just give me one minute i need to think here yeah sure thing. sure take your time yeah so i think first is the uh, mm, i think first one is connected callback then the wire then the render method okay so why wire in why wire after connected callback uh the instance of the component is uh inserted into dom so after that the wire method is invoked i think okay any other reason because the data we want is uh, already fetched by the wire mm -hmm. with the in the after the connected callback that's why i think okay so uh, have you worked on apex trigger also yeah okay so can you tell me the best practices to write trigger okay basically one object should have only one trigger uh, we have to use future method either future notation uh, also uh, avoid using hard coding id uh, you we have to use the uh, handler class for the trigger and avoid the recursion also uh, okay yeah. so in first point you say one trigger per object okay 
So, yes. uh, what is the reason behind this? Actually, we can write multiple trigger for the object, but uh, of in that scenario, the order of execution of trigger we cannot specify. So that's why we go with the one object, one trigger. Okay. And now let's move to asynchronous apex. So here, uh, have you worked on this asynchronous part? Yes, yes. So can we call batch apex from batch apex? One from another? Mm. Yes, we can call batch apex in a batch uh, batch apex in batch apex, but only in a finish method. Only in finish method. Okay. So is there any limit also to how many batch we can call? simultaneously uh, I'm not uh, sure about it okay, mm, so I don't know about it and can we call feature methods also from batch apex uh, no we cannot call future method inside batch and if we call future method inside uh, yeah Salpos does not allow to call future method inside a batch. Okay. And if we call future method inside the batch execute method, then we get the error that uh, we are future method cannot be called from the batch execute or the future. And if we call future method inside a finish method, then we get the error too many future method one. And inside and in this batch apex, okay, first method we have start method. Okay, where we used to yes. return the uh, records to the second function. So yeah. can we perform any custom logic also there in this function or just we need to query out the records here? Yeah, we can write the custom logic, but the return type of the start method is a query locator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, first uh, first line in first line, I will going to retrieve my records. Okay, using this SOQL. Then on this retrieved okay. uh, records, I will going to perform some of the logic like uh, I want to embed some of the on the string field. I want to embed some more other string there. Okay. Then after doing this, I will going to return the same list. So can we do this? Yeah, but we have to use a database dot retrieval, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is the difference between database dot insert and the insert? Okay, uh, basically when we use insert statement, mm -hmm. then the, uh, let's say I'm assuming one example, I am I have to insert 100 record. In that 100 record, 20 record is a faulty record, which are not going to save in a database. If I use insert keyword, then uh, all the you know, transaction has been loaded back and no record has been going to save in database. But if I use database dot insert, then the only successful record has been going to save in database and the unsuccessful record or failed record are not going to that database. Okay. Okay. Now, can you explain me the security model in Salesforce? Uh, yeah. Salesforce provided security for the object, object driver security, field driver security, and also record driver security. Uh, object driver security and field driver security are provided by the uh, provided inside the profile in itself and for the record driver security we have um, OWD and also in OWD we have um, sharing setting the role hierarchy and manual manual sharing okay so what if the OWD of a object is set as private what will happen Okay, if the OWD is private, then the let assume two users, then they cannot see each other data, each other records. Okay, and in case of read only, uh, the another user can see user one record, but he cannot edit that. Okay, so how do how we can enforce this? Uh security or on this apex classes so by default they will going to run in a system mode right now i want to run them in yeah, a yeah. user mode so how we can do this uh yeah we can do that with the help of with changing keyword if we enforce with changing keyword to our class then it will run on a so using this with sharing user keyword, sharing. okay so using this with sharing keyword only the record level security will be enforced on this 
Apex class. Now I want oh, to yes. yeah, I want to check for profiles and the permission sets and field level security also. So then how you can do this? Okay, uh we have to go with the schema, I think schema proof. Okay. You okay. can go with the schema. Mm -hmm. 